We have an update from one of our sponsors, the Vegas Near Me app. They are constantly working to add more information. We tell you that all the time. The app is free. We also tell you that. But gosh, when we get these updates, it really is incredible how much information is inside. Yeah, Vegas Near Me has recently partnered with Vegas.com to get you the best prices on show tickets. In fact, they have over a thousand shows listed inside the app. And also, we know sometimes you need a quick break or a familiar go-to when you're in Las Vegas. And they do have more than 1,400 chain restaurants and stores listed in there. They have more than 8,000 individual locations, so you can find them. We're talking Walgreens, Starbucks, you know, fast food, you name it. And we all love to save money, don't we? Well, Vegas Near Me is going to help with that, too. Right now, they're offering 50% off of shows at Jimmy Kimmel's Comedy Club, Plus, a $99 bottle package at Crazy Horse 3 for up to four people, including transportation. Yeah, that's a good deal. And there's lots of other deals in there, too. So get in and look around. Vegas Near Me is free. You don't have to put in your email. Download it in the Google or Apple App Store. Hours, locations, even the length of shows are in there. It's really good. You can even find live music, kid-friendly activities, maps of inside the hotels and casinos. It really is a lot of information in your hand. It is Vegas near me. Download it today. It's episode 227 of Vegas Revealed. Get ready because most of the show is full of tips. We met a listener at one of our suggested spots on the strip. Another listener is headed to town and wants some recommendations. So this week you're going to get them. Plus, our Celine Dion encounter that is going crazy online. You'll hear all of the firsthand details coming up. There's a new Virgin Atlantic nonstop flight from Las Vegas and a pass that will let you party all day and party all night in Viva Las Vegas. That's what we love to do. It's all ahead on Vegas Revealed. Vegas Revealed presented by Level Up Law starts now. Welcome, everyone, to Vegas Revealed, episode 227. Dana Roselli and Sean McAllister here. Remember that TV show, 227? I I was just (laughs) thinking that as you were saying the numbers. I was like, oh, my gosh, with Marla Gibbs back in the day. That was Jack A. It was great. Yeah, I I loved it. I was trying to think of the the theme song. What was it? Oh, my gosh. Um, (laughs) Ugh. Anyway, <laughs> it's going to come to me at some point. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. It's episode two to seven, which is exciting. Can you believe we've done 227 episodes? I can't. Well, no, I can't. <laughs> and I also can't believe that like Fourth of July is right around the corner. Either. I know all that summer. It is Man. hot, hot, hot in Vegas, everyone. Oh, I, I feel like it might be the hottest that it's been consistently in a long time, but I know the East Coast is experiencing stuff like that, too. I don't always want to start the show off with weather, but I know people like to just get a hint of what we're going through. Well, I think I read something that it's set to be the hottest July on record mm-hmm. in Las Vegas. We've yeah. been consistently like hovering around 110. Yeah. And I saw a quote from Bill Nye, the science guy. Is that his name? Yeah, that's his name. Today, saying that um, we should just expect it to be like this from now on, that it's only going to get hotter over the years. Oh, good. (laughs) Well, I just put up new blinds to block out the the heat and sun in our house. So I guess it's a good investment. Yeah. Hey, listen, we're going to start off with, we got a lot of stories, a lot of things to talk about, but we're going to start off with a text message. Remember, in our show notes, there's a link and you can text us whenever you feel like it. Your full number does not come across. Your name doesn't come across. You can add your name in there, but we love to hear from you. And we did get a text message from Veronica in Indiana. And Veronica was reaching out because, first of all, she's been listening to the podcast for a bit. And Veronica, we thank you so, so much for listening. Um, But she was looking for ideas because she is, oh, I wonder if it's a surprise. I wonder if we're allowed to talk about it. Um, I was in search for ideas for a surprise birthday trip for my boyfriend. Hmm. (laughs) Well, she wrote it. (laughs) <laughs> she knows we're reading it. She said she listens and she's hooked. It doesn't necessarily mean her boyfriend is listening. That is true. 
I'm leaving it in. With that being said, she says, it's our first time in Vegas. What are some things we have to try when we visit? We are coming for Labor Day weekend and staying at the Venetian. We're huge foodies, not much gamblers, and like to try different things. So far, all I have planned is going to minus five, taking a gondola ride at the Venetian, and eating at Hell's Kitchen. Let me know your thoughts, please. Love the podcast. Veronica from Indiana. So uh, we do have some ideas, Veronica. And by the way, uh, make sure your boyfriend doesn't listen if this is still a surprise. <laughs> um, so what you have lined up already, I think those are, those, are, those are great things to have on the list and already be preparing for. Yeah. Um, and the dinner at Hell's Kitchen, just know that they do have a, a preset menu where you can get the signature beef wellington as part of the prefix Mm, love that um yeah so we were sitting here thinking you know i mean first of all when you say like what other things i mean there are so many things it's just really difficult and then we were thinking of like what are some unique restaurants or what we just have a few ideas for you but like there are probably a million more but let's just start with this sean and i were thinking what would be really Great if you guys actually had dinner up in the Tower at the Palms at Vetri Cucina. It's a great restaurant, but also we love hotels that are just off the strip and give you a view of the strip. Because when you're on the strip, yet you're kind of on top of it. Right. Well, obviously, you know, if you're going to the the north end, the strat, you're gonna see south. But it is nice to be at some place like the Palms or, you know, even uh Voodoo at the top of the Rio to be able to see the strip. From kind of left to right. Exactly. And if you do plan on going to Vetri, that is a, a smaller restaurant up there at the top of the palm. So plan ahead, get a reservation in so that you can be sure to stop in there and then get after dinner drinks at, uh, Vo- no, at, um, oh my gosh, I'm totally blanking on the lounge that's up there now. I have voodoo stuck in my head. Uh, Ghost Bar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, when you said up there now, I was like, wait, what's new? But Ghost Bar has been there forever. Obviously, Go- it changed yeah. names and stuff, but it was Apex for a little while. But yes, Ghost Bar is great, too. And maybe that's a place. Maybe that's the thing. If you're not even going to do dinner, maybe you just go to Ghost Bar and go up to the top in the lounge and check out that view. It's so cool. For sure. Also, uh, be sure to get down to Fremont Street. There's a lot of stuff uh, down there. You have Circa. You have the Friday Night Fireworks at the Plaza. Um, Also, if you're downtown, the Arts District is good to check out. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I wouldn't say if you're... Well, I was going to say, if you're, you're a foodie, 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 maybe Fremont's not for you, but... Then again, there are a lot of great rest- restaurants at Fremont, um, like at Circa, Barry's Prime. Yeah, Hugo's Wine Cellar. Hugo's Wine Cellar, been the, there many times. Um, is it Andiamo at the D? Great. Yeah, yep. Um, trying to think. And then there's, of course, all the you know smaller ones that are just off Fremont that are excellent as well. And um, there's the Binion Steakhouse, too, that's up in like, yeah. their clock tower. Yeah, that's good, too. It has a good view of downtown. Yeah, so Fremont Street, maybe. Oh, and Oscar's Steakhouse. And Oscar's, obviously. Gosh, yeah. yeah, a lot of steakhouses. But all good. So yeah, I mean, so I guess you you know you could go down there and eat as well up there. I should say from the Strip, Fremont Street's always fun for people watching. You got to experience it once. If you have never been to Vegas, you got to go to Fremont Street. Absolutely, add it to the itinerary. Also, uh, if you are a foodie, uh, Bazaar Meat by Jose Andres over at Sahara has a menu that you will not find anywhere else. I mean, there are some just really innovative uh, preparations and presentations. So I would absolutely add that to your list uh, if you're looking for some unique dining options as well. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, the Fountain Blue has fabulous restaurants and they have a little bit of everything. They have a wonderful food hall area there. Um, There's uh, Komodo, there's Mother Wolf, there's Don's Prime and uh, Q and oh gosh, breakfast and lunch over at um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the name. Uh, I can't think of it. Sorry. Off the top of my head, I can't think of it. <laughs> anyway, where I went for dinner, they do dinner service too, but they're known for their breakfast. Anyway, I'm blanking on that. Let's move on. You'll find it all. Resorts World has incredible stuff. Now, if you're a foodie, we think that uh, food area, food, street food market, 
it resorts world would be something that you'd enjoy trying out. Yeah, there's lots of variety in there. Um, and that's one of those places where you order on the touch screen and then go to the actual uh, food hall stand to pick up your order. Mm-hmm. So just know how that works um, going in. Yeah, and it's great. I had fish and chips there. They had a fish and chips stand. That it Ooh. was so good. But they have such a variety over there. It's really kind of cool. The whole, I think it, you'd really enjoy that, especially if you said we like to try different things. Um, and by the way, it's La Fontaine. Just thought of it. There over it at is. Fountain Blue. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, really known for their breakfast and lunch. They do a great dinner now, too. But I feel like if you went over there for breakfast, that that would be a, that would kind of be your jam. All right. So uh, there we go. Those are some recommendations, Veronica, um, for the, the upcoming trip. By the way, if you listen back to podcast episode 213, we touch on some other activities if you are a first time visitor. So go back and check out that episode as well. A place that we talk about a lot is the pepper mill. And, you know, we don't go there like all the time, but we've lived here a long time. So for me, through my 20 years plus and living here, I gone to the pepper mill over and over and over again. Hadn't been for a little while. The other night you were at the win. Uh, you had a whole experience with Celine Dion, which we're going to get to in a minute. But after we're like, oh my gosh, like let's meet up and talk about it. I want to hear all about it. So we met at the pepper mill in the fireside lounge. Cause it was like, what, like 10 30. Yeah. Like 10 30 ish. Yeah. And when we were there, we ran into a podcast listener. Her name is Jackie. And she came over and said, I recognize your voices. And she said, well, like mostly yours, she pointed to me, and I thought that's because I'm so loud. And so exactly how I am on the podcast is how I am when you sit down and have a conversation with me. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, sometimes, sometimes not. But um, she recognized my voice because I was being loud. So Jackie came over. We got to meet Jackie and her husband, and they uh, listened to the podcast and moved here from Iowa, was it? I- Iowa or Idaho. Idaho. <laughs> One of the Idas. Iowa. <laughs> one of the eyes. <laughs> no, it was I believe it was Idaho. Yeah. Um, so it was great to meet you, Jackie, and your husband. Um, we appreciate the fact that you listen. And what was interesting is uh they were at a concert uh nearby at a nearby property. Yeah. Um Fountain Blue. When they were done, they were like, Oh, well, where should we go? And she said, Well, I've heard Dana and Sean talk about the pepper mill, and that's yeah. like where right next up. door. So <laughs> she went there because she heard about it on Vegas Revealed. And there lo we were. and behold, we were sitting right there by the fire pit. It's Isn't that funny? And it's like, I feel like, you know what? This just proves we don't just make stuff up. We actually talk about places <laughs> we go. This is legit, people. You are listening to a legit Vegas Revealed podcast. Um, and we don't make it up. We talk about and we recommend and we tell you experiences of things that we've experienced. And yeah, you might go there and we might be there. We go to the places we talk about, yeah. without a doubt. That was that was fun. I, I do love that Fireside Lounge. And it's affordable, too. And our waitress was so wonderful because I wanted... Uh, chicken fingers that weren't breaded. And she was like, well, I don't think we can do that. She went and found, and then she finally was like, why don't you just order the grilled chicken? (laughs) Order a side of grilled chicken. (laughs) And I'll bring you, and she brought three grilled chickens, and then she brought (laughs) fries for your husband. So anyway, she was wonderful. I mean, I feel like it's such a fun experience. It is. That's a great spot. If you haven't been, um, add that to your list, Yeah, too. All right, so... The one thing that Jackie did tell us, by the way, is that she wants more family activities listed out. So um, we're going to do that in an upcoming episode. Yeah. Coming yeah. up in the next couple of weeks. We'll yes. Because, you know, let's just be honest. Sean and I don't have kids. So we aren't the best people to ask about that stuff. We know places and we've done things that are like we've gone places that are good for families. Right. But like, you know, you'll most likely find us at someplace like the pepper mill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More so, adult oriented yes. activities and venues. But we have done some things that were like, this is great for fam. And so we made a complete list. It's actually in an upcoming TV show or one that just aired, but we're going to turn that clip and add some more to it and do that in a future episode very shortly in either the next one or the next one. Okay, let's talk about Celine Dion. I know we've been talking about her a lot because obviously she lives in Las Vegas. She has a documentary coming out. We want to see her back on stage. Uh, But you recently went to see 
a show at Win Las Vegas. And while you were there, Celine Dion was in the audience. Yeah. So uh, the show that we went to see uh, is is Hauser. He's a cellist from Europe, um, kind of a rock cellist. Like he does the you know, very ethereal mm-hmm. kind of stuff too. Ooh, but look at you in the big word. Th- you know? Ethereal. I try and bust out <laughs> something new every week. Okay. It doesn't always work, but this week <laughs> I'll check it off. Uh, so yeah, he does like big orchestral things, but then he also does rock music on his cello. He like lays down on his back and plays, mm-hmm. gets a harness and runs all over the place. Mm-hmm. Uh Celine apparently is a big fan of Hauser. No, yeah, he first of all for him, he has a strong fan base that we're seeing, but there's also people who's like, who is this guy after all this buzz? I've never heard of him, and it's like, oh, and a lot of people are like, oh, I know the guy who plays it on his back, the guy right. I've seen clips, I've seen. So yeah, he's very popular and has diehard fans. For sure. And apparently Celine's one of them, like you said. So go ahead. So we were sitting there uh waiting for the show to begin about 5 minutes before the show, we saw this line of people walking in from one of the front uh, doors up by the stage, and they started walking right up the aisle where we were sitting, and my, my husband, Shane, he was like, that's Celine Dion. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so it sure was. And yeah. she came, walked right up the aisle next to us and sat just across the aisle from us, and she was having a terrific time. First of all, Celine looked tremendous. That's good to hear. And just she like because lo- healthy, we want her to look exactly. Healthy. She looks She's healthy. Been sick. She looked healthy, excited to be there. The entire audience applauded and cheered for her when she walked into the theater. And then a little later in the concert, Hauser introduced her. And uh, there were more cheers and applause. It was just great to see Celine out. She was with her family. Her mm-hmm. three sons were there with her as well. But it was just such a great surprise. Oh, yeah. And loved seeing Celine looking great yeah. and having fun. Uh, and she really has fun when she's an audience member, audience member. She's so respectful of just showing her joy for the performer. And we have all those clips. So Sean was there. And uh, if you've seen clips of this, it's ours uh, generated <laughs> from us. Sean was sending me, you know, some clips and I'm like, I'll get on it. I'll post them. And it's like, you know, gone crazy and gone viral. It's been on TMZ and all sorts of other you know, even the the local paper and spend all over the Celine fan groups. And um, if you're interested in seeing some of that, just go to our Vegas Revealed TikTok or our Vegas Revealed Instagram or Twitter. You will find uh, tons of those clips and they are all originated from us at Vegas Revealed. Really, Sean. And um, I just thought it was interesting, though, because, you know, she there was one point where he introduced her and asked, you know, if she, he joked around, like, maybe it would be a dream come true of mine is to perform with you. Maybe one line you could come up and sing. And she graciously denied, you know, obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, some people were like, oh, he put her on the spot and it was inappropriate. But, you know, the context there, you were in the audience. Right. She didn't seem upset about it at all, did she? No, absolutely. No, it, not. She just it was one of those things where she is obviously an idol to him. Yeah. And to her, he is an incredible entertainer. Yeah. They had already met and talked backstage. She was like singing a little bit yeah. back there and he having went a for good it. time. And so he said, he was like, you know, I would love to perform with you. Maybe right now. Maybe when right should we now. do it? Yeah. And Celine. I mean, she wasn't going to get up and, no. and sing because I think she's very respectful of the fact that she is at somebody else's show too. Mm-hmm. And she's not going to try and hijack the show. Right. She's just not. Well, and people were chiming in saying she, every, people should know that she can't sing. It's in the documentary. And it's like, she can't get up and do a full show yet. She doesn't feel ready, but she's, she's starting to belt out. So even if back of the uh, backstage of the, the Beatles love show yep. the clips that they show, you know, she, she can sing. She just can't maybe sing a full song or doesn't want to, but, um, she's going to make her re- return on her terms yes. and it's going to be for Celine. It's not going to be a pop up in somebody else's show. Exactly. But, I being there, I did not feel that it was a disrespectful yeah. moment. It was 
two entertainers who have a mutual Mm -hmm. respect and admiration for one another having a fun moment. Yeah. And he's a little quirky anyway and charming and like all that. And I think that's exactly why Celine likes him. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) You have to check out our videos. They're really, really good. And by the way, just another note about the not being able to sing thing that people are going to see if you watch the I Am Celine documentary. It's out the 25th. 5th of yeah, June. It'll be out already by the uh, Prime Video. It's already out. Right. Um, there has been a, a big chunk of time that has elapsed since they shot that documentary. Mm-hmm. And in that span of time, Celine has been going to therapy and getting treatments from like the premier doctor who specifically studies this condition that she has. So she is in a much better place now than what she was during filming of that documentary so and don't she, think that that's her current state right and she's publicly gone on the record and during interviews at the opening of the pre-screening of the documentary saying i will be back on stage in las vegas correct at some point so that's from her mouth of wanting to and feeling like she will be able to when the time is right yes she's determined and there are rumblings that potentially end of the year, maybe early next year, mm-hmm. um, we may see a return to the stage here in Vegas by Celine Dion. All right, we've got a bunch of other uh, important things to talk about, but first let's take a quick moment and hear a message from our title sponsor, Level Up Law. Level Up Law is looking to help you. You might have heard about the recent lawsuits surrounding Ozempic. It's concerning, Right. Unfortunately, a lot of people have been experiencing some serious issues from taking semaglutide or terzepatides, including severe vomiting, hospitalization, pancreatic issues, the list goes on and on. If you've experienced any of this, you are not alone. And here's the thing, Level Up Law is here to help. We already have a team of lawyers researching this issue and preparing to help those who need it. Don't hesitate to reach out to our team if a doctor prescribed you these drugs and you're experiencing issues. Give us a call at 855-LEVEL-UP. That's 855-LEVEL-UP, and we will answer your questions. Remember, you're not alone. Level Up Law has got your back. And just a reminder, uh, The Sphere is on July 4th celebrating one year since it lit up the exosphere with images for the very first time. So in honor of that, uh, there's going to be a special production put on The Sphere with audio involved, too. Yeah, it's a big 4th of July show, so it's going to be spectacular. It's presented by Verizon. There are two showings, 9.30 p.m. and 11.40 p.m., and that's Las Vegas time. So you can actually go and watch this in person. It's like six parts, different themes. There's going to be a Stars and Stripes, an ode to the architecture of Las Vegas. They're going to celebrate Nevada, you know, and and the wild, wild west, and uh, they're going to do a whole uh, fireworks display, a lot of different elements here. So, and it's going to have audio. So that's the two things that are going to debut the XO audio. <laughs> um, and then also the exosphere live stream and this live stream, once it debuts on 4th of July will now be 24 seven. I love that. And yeah, and it's going to be at the sphere.com. So you can watch the shows and then anytime you want to watch the sphere on the outside, the exosphere, you'll be able to watch this live stream. That's perfect because uh, we have been clamoring for an official Sphere live stream, and Mm -hmm. now we have it. We have it. Yeah, this is going to be great. You're going to go. I'm going to be out of town. You're going though, right? I am absolutely going to be there. I'll see the the inaugural presentation of the the show that they're putting on and hear that EXO audio Mm -hmm. for the first time. And I don't know if people, uh, I know we have a lot of listeners in Las Vegas and then also if visitors are in town, um, they say just come watch it. So we don't know like the logistics of everything, but there's several parking lot areas around there. Um, You could park at a nearby you know, like the Tuscany or one of the plazas maybe and walk through and walk up to the parking lot to watch it. Obviously, because you can see it from, you know, far away. But if you want to hear the audio part, I'm assuming you need to be just, you know, a little bit closer. So um, I don't know. You're on your own on that one. (laughs) Yeah, we don't have the details about those (laughs) logistics right now. So, um, you know, 
figure it out, yeah. I guess. That's yeah. what I'm going to do. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, coming up next week here on uh, the podcast, we're going to do a special edition dedicated specifically to the sphere in honor of that one year anniversary of the illumination of the exosphere. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. We're going to share, you know, we've got, we've had a lot of interviews and done uh, a a lot of coverage on the sphere. So we're going to sprinkle all that in and kind of put it together in an updated version. There's some interviews you may not have heard. We may have only played small pieces, but we're going to let them breathe a little bit or, you know, so I think, I think you'll really enjoy it. It's, it's been an interesting year because the sphere has just, you know, attracted, just eyes from around the world. And I'm telling you, man, I was thinking about, yeah, I'm a big Swifty and I've been, I've been watching her <laughs> shows in London and thinking this era's tour, once she hits now Germany and then she's, go, she's going all over and she'll be back in London. Then she's hitting Miami and she's doing, I think, Indiana, but she's going to end in December. And I was thinking like, what do you do after that? That is at that magnitude, you know, the amount of sold out shows, the amount of, moments in pop culture. She is just every day a part of pop culture, you know, making history. What do you do? And I was thinking, I mean, creatively, if you took a couple months off, rested up, and then thought, let me get into the Sphere Studios in Burbank and create the most mind, you know, this mind-blowing show that, I could do for a year and stay put. I mean, that and get would be into the studio and record new music. Wild, and right, and be the first female artist to be announced at this right. year. I mean, all sorts of different. So I'm like, I don't know. I hope somebody's hope somebody's on it. Well, let's she'd see. sell it out every single night. If anyone from Sphere is listening, <laughs> let's manifest this. Yes, let's make man. it happen, Taylor. Oh. At Sphere Las Vegas. That could be cool. I mean, it's, you know, it, it can't fit as many people as could be there. You know, she's... Oh, well. But that doesn't matter. It's just high demand and it just sells out every night. Yeah. I mean... And it would. I'm not sure she'd do it. But if you did need to do something different, you know, and wanted to do something... I mean, if I was a creator and an artist, I'd be dying to get into the Sphere. Oh, my... I mean, <laughs> first of all, you'd have to wrap your head around the capabilities of the place yeah, and then come up with some ideas that, that are well suited to that. Yeah. Which that could, it could be a learning curve to get your mind thinking in that Mm -hmm. (laughs) spherical realm. Right. So, (laughs) Hey, for all you, uh, listeners in England, did you know, I'm sure you probably do, but just in case you didn't, Sir Richard Branson was here and announced uh, new flights from Las Vegas to Manchester, which is awesome. Um, And, you know, obviously round trip. And so that's really cool. It's going to operate three times per week. They're using the Airbus A350-1000. The reason I say that, too, is a lot of our podcast listeners and people I see on Twitter get really into what type of plane. Yes, that's true. Well, especially for transatlantic flights. Yeah, it makes a difference. Okay. It's fitted with economy, premium economy, and upper class cabins. So a good variation there. But it's a Manchester to Vegas service, and uh, it's operating now. The showgirls were there to, you know, on the tarmac to greet the first flight and all that. And so that's kind of cool. They already fly to uh, Orlando, New York, and Atlanta, and so now they'll have the Vegas. And, of course, uh, Virgin Atlantic also does daily flights out of Heathrow yes. as well. So this is in addition to right. another option to get you here uh, easier and quicker. Yeah, different part of that. Um, I love Virgin Atlantic. Whenever I go to London, <laughs> I fly I fly that. I've taken British Airways. I don't mind it, but I, I, I do prefer Virgin Atlantic. I like their meals. Ooh, okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's do some tips now, even though we just did a bunch of tips. Let's do more. At the top of the show, Dana, we mentioned that it has been, like, ridiculously hot. Mm -hmm. So the other night, it was, once again, after sundown and well above 100 degrees, and I was like, oh, I just want some good, like, ice cream or frozen custard. And I saw a post online of somebody saying that the frozen custard at Rio, Mm -hmm. at the new canteen food hall, was delicious and stacks it up against any of the famous frozen custards out there. So I said, okay, let's go give it a try. And it was 
<laughs> absolutely delicious. Yeah, you loved it. I absolutely loved it. I just had plain vanilla custard. Oh. They do have toppings that you can put on, like uh, brown butter cookie crumbles. Mm. Uh, they have sprinkles of different varieties, some other toppings as well. Um, but just the plain vanilla was so good. It's just so rich and creamy, mm. and it hit the spot. And for five bucks, you get a really good sized cup. Like oh. I could have probably done fine with just half of the cup. Really? Wow. So they give great serving sizes five bucks. and for That's five good. bucks. That's good. And this is at a uh, Tender Crush, which is the the chicken, chicken tender mm-hmm. uh, stand that's right there. It's the first thing you get to if you're walking over to the food hall from the casino over at Rio. Um, so I highly recommend it. Okay, that's good to know. And they do have different flavors. Uh, or were there? Uh, I believe it's just a vanilla oh, custard. Okay, just a vanilla. But custard. you have some topping choices. Oh, I see. Okay, just a vanilla with the toppings. Interesting. Okay, good to know. Yeah, a lot of people enjoying that canteen food hall. Um, so I lo- I love to hear that. And it's a it's another spot. And didn't you say you ordered it ahead of time? Uh, or well, something. You can. You can order it from, if you scan the QR codes that are around the okay. food hall, you can order right from the app and then go pick it up at the stand. But um, we ended up going to the window because they were shutting the machine down to clean it. Okay. And so they took it off the app. So got we got the last serving of the night. And by the way, they do clean the machines around 930. Okay. So <laughs> go by nine to get your frozen custard. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. All right, well, here's something else, because you saw this, Sean, just now, and actually, I haven't even really read it yet, but um, you thought we might need to get this in because it's a, quite a deal. Starting at 99 bucks, you can party all day, party all night, and it's called the Las Vegas Party Pass, and apparently it just got even better than it used to be. Yeah, this pass is good at any of the Tau Group nightclub and day clubs. So as you said, starting at 99 bucks, you can get a pass that gets you unlimited entry into all of their nightclubs throughout the day. So that includes Hakkasan, Omnia, Wet Republic, Jewel Nightclub, Tau Nightclub, Tau Beach, Marquee Nightclub, and Marquee Day Club. Okay, that's a great deal. Uh, access is everything because you don't want to have to worry about it. Right, it's guaranteed unlimited access. Okay. So that is, this is... I think this is a great thing for anybody who's coming to town specifically for day life and nightlife activities. This is a must. Yeah. And you can get it at taugroup.com because I, I Googled it to see, and I'm seeing like DJ Polly D, Fight Weekend. He's at Marquee. Tiesto's doing Fight Weekend at Wet Republic. That's, you know, June 29th um, this weekend. And then um, they got the whole list of everyone that's everywhere, all the different DJs, Steve Aoki doing Hakkasan. Um, so, a f- oh, Sophie Tucker will be over at Tau Beach. I mean, a great lineup everywhere you look, and then you'll get access and won't have to worry about it. We don't know exactly how it works, but if you do get one and try it, you know, again, text us. It's in our show notes, and let us know how it went. And the uh, party all day, party all night passes are good Thursday through Sunday, and that also includes uh, Mondays when it falls on a long weekend. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's good that's to know. great. Yeah, really great. Hey, uh, you probably hear our Vegas Near Me uh, commercials. They sponsor the audio podcast, and we love to try and get as much information in there as we can to let you know what that app includes. But something I noticed in my notes the other day, Sean, that we didn't get in in this week's is um, they do have the seating charts now for the different theaters oh, in right. there, and they're building that. And that is great because I am one of those people that is constantly like Googling seating charts. Like where can I sit? Where is it to the stage? So, I mean, they're constantly updating Vegas Near Me. Again, you can download it for free in the Google or Apple App Store, and it has so much information. Also, uh, we want to say a big thank you to our presenting sponsor, Level Up Law. If you have uh, any legal needs, just give them a call. It's a free consultation, 855-LEVEL-UP. Yeah, or you can go to leveluplaw.com. A lot of people asking us about Level Up, and so um, we love that. We recommend them. They've been a great title sponsor for us. Thank you to all our subscribers who help us keep the audio podcast alive. We appreciate you so 
much. We really, really do. And next week, like Sean said, we're doing a special show on the sphere for the one year anniversary. I am taking off some time to go to upstate New York. So, um, we'll admit we're probably going to take the TV version and make it into an audio version, but all the information is there and we listen and it sounds really good. The following week, we're going to do some of the family activities that we've done. So we're going to try and give you new information, even though we are taking a couple weeks off. Yeah. So uh, such is the case with, with summertime, right? it, with everyone. Every, yeah. I'm getting all the, I mean, every person I write to out of office, out of office, out of office, out of office. And I'm like, well, then why are we all working? Should everyone just take the summer off? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But there's always so much to talk about. So, And, of course, you can follow us on all our socials. We keep those updated all the time, every day. Thanks for joining us on episode 227. 228 will be back at you next week. <laughs>